It was full steam ahead on the island of Sodor. All the engines were running on time. They wanted to finish their work quickly because tonight was Halloween. The engines love seeing the children in their Halloween costumes. And the engines love to hear tales of ghostly engines and scary steam trains. That evening, the Fat Controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas and Emily, you must go to the smelter's yard, he said. An important delivery of iron must be collected right away. Yes, sir, they puffed. Percy thought the smelter's yard was spooky. He was worried about his friends. Look out for ghosts, he whistled nervously. It is Halloween. There's no such thing as ghosts, Thomas said cheerfully. It's just silly make-believe, added Emily. And they steamed off to the smelter's yard. The sun was setting and it was getting dark. Imagine being scared of Halloween, puffed Thomas. Oh, the smelter's yard, sniffed Emily. Pa, added Thomas. Thomas and Emily enjoyed feeling brave. But when they got to the smelter's yard, it was very spooky. Oh my, whispered Emily. Oh dear, hissed Thomas. They puffed slowly through the piles of jagged steel and twisted scrap. The air grew hotter and smoke grew thicker. Harry and Bert were lurking nearby. The two diesels saw the chance to scare a couple of steamies. When Thomas and Emily rolled by, they moaned and groaned. It sounded spooky. What was that? snapped Emily. You said there was no such thing as ghosts. Silly make-believe, you said, gasped Thomas. Suddenly a truck began to shudder and shake. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. Help, wailed Emily. That's a ghost. Let's get away from here. They didn't know Harry and Bert had been bumping the flatbed buffers. The two naughty diesels were having great fun. Thomas and Emily pulled up to the smelting shed. They gasped at the ghostly shadows and fizzing sparks. Their wheels felt as if they were frozen, but they had to go inside. I hope the ghost hasn't gone in there, quaked Thomas. Me too, quivered Emily. And they both rolled slowly into the smelting shed. Inside, chains clanked and strange shadows danced across the walls. Must be brave, must be brave, Thomas puffed. But it was spooky. Emily was turning round ready to shunt some trucks. A great whoosh of sparks lit up the shed. Bust my buffers, cried Emily. Emily was scared. She didn't notice the huge white tarpaulin. It fell, covering her from funnel to footplate. The ghost, it's got me. She steamed away as fast as her pistons could pump. Thomas thought Emily was the ghost, and he raced out of the smelting shed. The ghost is after me, cried Thomas. Harry and Bert thought Emily was the ghost too, and they raced away. Thomas was right behind them, and Emily was right behind Thomas. The ghost has got me! Harry, Bert, Thomas and Emily raced towards Tidmouth's sheds. 
Tidmouth's sheds was quiet and peaceful. All the engines were fast asleep. Thomas's whistle soon woke them up. It's Thomas! cried Percy. Something must be wrong! Suddenly he saw Thomas, Harry and Bert racing into the yards. Stop! he cried. Harry, Bert and Thomas applied their brakes. They stopped just in time. The ghost is after us, whistled Thomas. Percy was scared, but just then Emily raced under a signal and the tarpaulin flew off. That's no ghost, said Percy. That's Emily. The engines didn't feel scared anymore, but they did feel foolish. The fat controller arrived wearing his pyjamas. What is all this fush and bother, he boomed. It has caused confusion and delay. But sir, cried Thomas, the flatbeds were rattling and we heard moaning, said Emily. And groaning, added Thomas. The fat controller looked at Harry and Bert. Do you know anything about this? he asked sternly. It was us, sir, Bert mumbled. For your punishment, you will go back and collect the iron at once, said the fat controller. Yes, sir, said Harry and Bert, and they rumbled away. Whenever Thomas and Emily went back to the smelter's yard, they knew there was nothing to be scared of. After all, there is no such thing as ghosts. It was all silly make-believe.